Hello, in this presentation, we will record what is oftentimes one of the first couple transactions that will happen within a new company. We will record these transactions into QuickBooks Pro 2018, those being the record of a deposit from the owner and a deposit from a loan taken out to fund the startup of the business. If you've been working with us, we're going to continue on with the Git great guitars problem if you have not been working with us that is okay we can still see how to record the original deposit from an owner and loan within to a new business what we've done so far is we've set up the get guitars business we have a new company file we put in the beginning balances the beginning accounts and the beginning balances within those accounts set up a couple vendors set up a custom couple customers and uh, we are now going to actually start recording the transactions. We're going to record all these transactions as of the first date of 2021. So we're starting uh, a date that's not going to be of the current date. That's by design when we work problems such as these. So we've done everything in order to start things up. And now we're actually going to be entering these transactions. This is typically going to be uh, the first type of transaction, oftentimes with a startup uh, type of company. And therefore, we're going to enter the deposits. A couple ways we could enter deposits. We could go to record deposits here. But oftentimes, the first deposit, I like to go to the uh, check register. So we'll, we will then go <laughs> to the check register in order to enter these deposits. That's going to be located in the banking drop down. And we're going to go down to use register banking and then use register and this is going to look familiar we're going to have a drop down here it should default to the checking account whatever your checking account is if you select the drop down you can see you have all the accounts and we can actually open the register for just about any account if not all accounts but typically we want to open the check register oftentimes being the most useful and i'm going to open that we're going to say okay the check register should look familiar in that it looks pretty much like a checkbook and that's uh, that's the nice thing about it and is also the reason why QuickBooks tries to make a lot of the other accounts have a, a register that looks similar. But when working with the registers, it's usually uh, better or easiest to work within the check register and then record anything to any prior any other account in the other account. So how this is going to work then is we're going to have the date. We're going to put the payee here or the customer and then we have the payment and then we have the deposit we do need to name another account here so note that that's kind of the thing that's a bit different than possibly a checkbook we not only need the payee or customer the reference of who we're paying or getting money from but also an account that quickbooks needs to record to so we're going to make sure that we pick that up we then have the memo if needed right here so we're going to go ahead and put this information in here now when we go here it's going to try to guess what the first check number is now typically if we have a new checkbook or something we're going to have it's probably going to be like 101 or something like that but we'd have to put the first check number in and then it would uh, number automatically from that point forward i'm going to first select the date we're going to say that the date of this deposit is going to be 01 we're going to put it in, in 0110 and then 2021 so 01 10 21 we're going to get that from our pdf file so it's just going to be from the directions on the pdf file when you select the tab it'll go to the next item here now because i don't want a check number at all and this is actually a deposit i actually delete the check number and i just usually put a reference as a deposit here then the payee there is no payee we're the ones going to put the information in so we could put owner or something like that i'm actually going to leave it blank at this point and we want to make sure that we're in the deposit section so we're on the deposit side not the payment side within the deposit side we're going to enter sixty-five thousand, and that's how much we're going to put in as the owner next item we're going to have the account here so this is going to be the account now the owner is the one putting the money in so that's gonna it's not gonna usually when we get a money and we get a deposit later on it's going to be hopefully revenue from a customer we cannot put it to an income statement account we're not going to put it to income or uh, expenses what we're going to do is put it into some type of equity account an investment we may set up another investment account but typically we just put it into the equity account 
our equity account, if we scroll up, we'll see the type of accounts on the right hand side. And the equity account we're looking for is going to be that owner equity account. So we're going to actually post it to the owner equity account there. And note it doesn't record. Now I'm not going to put a, well, we could put a memo, say the owner investment. Note that it's not going to record here until we hit enter or return or select record down here. So if you were to leave right now, it would not have recorded. So I'm going to select enter and it's going to say, are you sure you want to record it to this equity account? Because that's a bit of a rare type of transact it doesn't happen all the time. We're going to say, okay, that's what we want to have happened. And then it says it, it goes and it's going to click that once it goes down to the next line. That's when we know it has been completed. If you got the sound on, then it usually has a little sound too as well, which will indicate that it has been completed. Next, we're going to do a loan. So we're going to do a similar type of transaction for a loan amount. And we're going to say that that's going to happen on the same date. It's also going to be not a check number. So we don't want the one. We want a deposit. And we then we're going to put the bank name here. We're going to say Chase is who we're going to receive this loan from, Chase Bank. And we're going to say tab. And it says uh, we're going to have to set something up. This name is not found. We're going to set it up. Now, we're not going to do the full setup. We're going to do a quick setup here. So I'm going to say I want to do a quick add. And then it's going to ask, are we talking about a vendor, an employee, a customer, or other? We're not really talking about a vendor or a customer or employee. So we'll put it into other because we're taking a loan out vendor is kind of the you know closest one but that would be dealing with people that we um, buy stuff from and we're taking a loan here so not really the same same thing make sure that we're going over to the deposit not the payment side so we are over here within the deposit side and the loan that we will be taking out is the fifty thousand so there's the fifty thousand loan we're going to select tab then we need the account and we may have the loan account set up already. If not, then we would have to set up a new account. I'm going to try to type in loan. So there we have it. It's going to say loan payable. I'm going to say tab. If we had not set that up, then we can type in a loan payable. And when we select tab, it'll say we don't have that account. Do you want to set it up? And I would typically set it up as an other current liability account and, and then just set up the loan payable account. Just make sure you have the right account type. Uh, then we're going to say we uh, take out a loan is going to be I'll put for the memo here and then I'm going to say tab make sure that it's not going to enter anything until we hit enter or until we hit tab so I'm going to say tab and then there we have that information now we can check on this and see if it does what we think it should do what it should it do it should at least increase the checking account on our financial statements in some way so let's go to our financial statement the main financial statement that the balance sheet and go to reports and scroll down we're going to go to the uh, company financials we're looking for the balance sheet so i'm going to scroll over to the right scroll down to the balance sheet and there we have it we're going to change the dates to uh, 12 31 21 this time i'm going to go to the end of the current year that we're going to be working on and we see the checking account balance now has a 140 if we want to see the detail within that checking account balance, we can use the zoom in feature. We're going to double click on it to see the zoom in feature. And here is going to be that activity. Note that because the balance sheet is as of a point in time, when we go in and see the detail in the transaction by account, which is kind of like the general ledger account, we, don't, we only see one day here. And what we really want to see is the entire year. So we're going to select tab and put 010121 and then see the activity that has then happened and that activity then includes the beginning balance of 25 that's what we had in there before we started this and then we had the 65,000 here that we just put in place I'm going to extend the memo and that's from the owner investment the other side of it you can see went split that means the other account that it is going to is the owner's equity and then we see the 50,000 in the deposit the other side it's going to is loan if we want to see those, then we can close this out. And I'm going to say, no, don't show me that again. And then we're going to say, scroll back down. And we say the loan payable is here. So if we want to see the activity, I can double click on that. And I'm going to change the date again to 010121. 
and we can see there's the Chase loan, the other side, the checking accounts. There's always going to be those two accounts that are impacted when we do these transactions. It's a good idea to go to the financial statements, jump back and forth and see what's happening, see what QuickBooks is doing. Even if we don't fully understand the debits and credits, we should kind of see how this whole balancing thing works. And that's one way you can get a better understanding of how these things are tying together. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. The last one set up the other side was going to the equity section. So that's going to be here. Let's double click on that. I'm going to change the first date. 010121. And there we have this amount here. That's from the owner investment, increasing the equity section, increasing the net value of the company, increasing the amount owed to the owner of that 65. If we wanted to drill down on this, then we can kind of see the transaction. Note if I double to click on these, it doesn't take me to the check register, but to a form, which is what QuickBooks is gonna, is gonna use to drive the, the, their transaction. So even though we're entering this information into the check register, QuickBooks still generates, in this case, a transfer funds form. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this back out, close this back out. So that's the effect on the balance sheet of the deposit from both a loan and the owner deposit uh, within to QuickBooks program 2018.